Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we're going to show you some of the similarities and differences between a real Cessna 172G and a simulator Cessna 172R. Coming up. So Riley contacted me a little bit ago and he asked me if we wanted to do a video where we kind of go through a real plane versus a simulator. So that happened and we filmed the interview just to share a lot of the knowledge behind the simulator and the real plane. It's really fascinating to see the real plane and to learn a little bit more about the systems behind it, and I hope you learn a lot. For your convenience, I've placed most of the part numbers for these systems up there. So let's start off with the clock. My clock is actually just a hole right now in the panel, but it has potential and it's going to go somewhere. Uh, let's go over to the actual plane and see what it should look like. This here is the main clock. This only runs when the engine's on. Right now the master is on, so as you can see it is not running. That's the clock. Right on. Next, let's go to the airspeed indicator. My airspeed indicator is driven by a servo uh, and it has the values all printed on it. So the all of the airspeed readouts uh, up to V and E. So that's what mine looks like. Let's go into the plane. Mine is run by the pitot tube, which is outside there. It has the remove before flight thing, the giant green thing with the red tip there. It's moving. Basically it has your V-speeds here, you're safe for flaps right here. You're still safe, you just can't deploy flaps. Uh, slow down or you're gonna break your airframe. And um, it's run by a pitot tube and mine's in miles per hour. So that's what it looks like on a real plane and let's go to the next item on the list. Up next is the attitude indicator. This is run by two servos as well. Uh, it shows you your bank and pitch. So that's most of it for the attitude indicator. Unfortunately, the knob does not work yet. So this art the airplane does not move up and down to your viewpoint. Let's go over to the real plane. So this is my attitude indicator is run by basically turning on the master switch here. And it won't do anything now because I have to be in level flight. But basically, that that's it. It's a Beechcraft, I believe. Yeah, Beechcraft attitude indicator. And it's also known as the artificial horizon. Up next, we have the altimeter. Mine is driven by a stepper motor. And it has a about 1 to 1,000 gear ratio. So when the outer needle here travels one full rotation, the inner needles travel a little less than one rotation. So you'll see this is 1,000 feet and the gear ratio behind it actually makes it so that one rotation affects all of the needles. Over to the Cessna. Okay, so here's my altimeter. It has a gear ratio and I don't know what it is. So here's my altimeter. Next, we have the turn coordinator. Uh, also known as the turn and slip indicator, uh, if it looks different. It has a ball that is actually also controlled by a servo, uh, and the airplane is controlled by a servo as well. A lot of my instruments are controlled by servos, and I'm upgrading to stepper motors later. On to the Cessna. So on a Cessna 172G, you actually have two core turn coordinators, which I guess is not exactly true because each Cessna is laid out a little differently in the cockpit. We have one that looks like this and one that looks like this. This is the ball one that he's talking about. That is the just normal one that you see in most aircraft. So yeah, that is the turn coordinator on a Cessna 172G. So the next thing is the heading indicator. 
Uh, this is run by a stepper motor. It's actually in prototyping phase. Uh, it doesn't even fit in the panel because the holes are too big and it actually slides off of the screws. So it'll go right here and look a little bit like this. Onto the Cessna. So these are the compasses in the Cessna 172. We have the analog one up here, which is always accurate. And then we have a normal compass as well. So yeah, I have to manually program this each time. So it looks like we're at about 26 degrees. So let's master it. And then, uh, and these are the two compasses on my airplane. Onto the vertical speed indicator. My vertical speed indicator, uh, just like the airspeed indicator is run off of a single servo with actually a gear ratio. I think it's about one to 36. Uh, because the servo has 180 degrees of rotation, where the instrument requires about 350. Let's go on to the Cessna. So this is the rate of climb indicator on the Cessna 172G. It, yeah, I'm not really sure what the knob is for, don't ask me. But, uh, <laughs> it works, and it works well. So, yeah. The next instrument we have is the tachometer, the RPM indicator. Uh, it takes the rotations per minute off of the engine and displays them. This is built the same as my airspeed indicator and vertical speed indicator right now with the single servo. On to the Cessna. Here's my tachometer here. It's a tachometer and it has engine hours. Uh, I don't really know where to go on besides that. It's a tack. It tax stuff. <laughs> Dang taxes. Well, that's not something you see every day. Sorry. This guy's using his truck to tow his tail wheel. His tail dragger. <laughs> He's towing his tail dragger with his truck. What? <laughs> this is the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen. Okay. Next, we have the engine instruments. Uh, there's the fuel indicators. The EGT fuel flow, temperature, uh, oil pressure, vacuum, and amperage. So I have fuel indicators too. Uh, you never trust them. As you can, you'll see right here. It says empty. You tap it a couple times, and it goes back up to full. So <laughs> never trust those on a real Cessna. Here's our suction gauge that does not have a bad shadow on it anymore. Here's our fuel gauge, one of our fuel gauges, our oil temp, our oil pressure, and our other fuel gauge, as well with our tachometers and our engine temps. I'm serious. You tap it and it goes up. I don't have okay. enough fuel. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> I'll also have you know that my fuel indicator indicators are not accurate either. That is built to the real Cessna. Uh, the servos are actually a little broken, so... You don't even really need fuel indicators on a flight sim, though, let's be honest. <laughs> Just press, like, Control-R for refuel or something. Let's go over to the fuel fuse panel. Mine has about nine places for fuse caps, and you can feel that they're all in because they don't exist. None of them are popped out. Over to the Cessna. Okay, so this this is my fuse panel. We have flaps, interior lights, autopilot, which is actually not installed in this aircraft anymore. The radios, three radio be breakers, uh, just alt stuff, nav lights, rotating beacons, landing lights, gen stuff. So we have a total of 11 fuses in this aircraft, and none of them are popped out anymore. Hooray! Let's go on to the switch panel. My switch panel has the seven switches for lights and the, the fuel pump and the pitot tube, as well as the battery, which turns on the simulator, uh, battery and alternator switch, as well, and the avionics master switch. Let's go on to the Cessna. If you start hearing it start, don't. Don't. Yeah, okay. 
So this is my switch panel. I have a drain here. I have my avionics master. Airplane stop flying at the airport. Could you turn your engine off real quick? I'm trying to film. Okay, so right here I have the drain, the master, the primer, the mags, uh, mag one, mag two, both and start. I'm not gonna turn those on, but it's just a normal key. And then here's the breakers again. Here I have the cabin heat, cabin air, nav lights, rotating beacon, landing lights, and carp heat. And then throttle quadrants and flaps. So we also have the throttle, the mixture, and the flaps panel. Let's move on to the Hobbs meter. My Hobbs meter is a Hobbs meter off of Amazon. It's a little cheaper and it's made of plastic, probably not metal, uh, but it displays the time, so it works. On to the Cessna. So, of course, you rev up right as I hit the go button. Okay, so here's my Hobbs meter. It is a Hobbs meter and it's a real Cessna Hobbs, Hobbs meter. So, yeah, it's a Hobbs meter. It's a Hobbsy meter. So we have the navigation instruments. We have the VOR1 with the glide slope and a localizer or a course deviation needle. The VOR2 with only one course deviation needle. And then we also have the AD, ABS, no, A, ADF. We also have the ADF, the automatic direction finder. Uh, it's not very built yet, so don't pay attention to it. Okay, on to the Cessna. So, this is my VOR. It's a VOR. Yeah. It's a VOR. Yeah, why would you when you have GPS? Let's go over a radio stack, I guess. Do you have radios? Half and half. So, for the radio stack, we have the COM1 radio and the transponder. There'd also be a COM2 radio, uh, but it's not been built yet. Built yet. You have the knobs for uh, fine adjustment of the frequency and then rough adjustment as well for the bottom one, and as well as the switch, uh, switch frequencies. We also have the transponder, it displays your code, and you press the buttons to set it here. And you have the knob to to select your mode. Okay, so this is my Garmin GPS. It is a nice little GPS. I don't really know what else to say about it. Uh, below that, we have our radio. It ha it's a dual radio, so we have... It just died. Okay. Now it says it has full battery. Huh. Okay. Must be like the fuel indicator. <laughs> Okay, here is a uh, radio. It has dual frequencies. So we have a frequency here and a standby frequency, and a frequency here and a standby frequency. This this side over here is actually used for our VOR, and this side over here is our COM. Then right here is our transponder, and I either hit VFR to squawk, VRFR codes, or I can enter my code in manually. But that's that. That's my radio stack. Very cool. Uh, let's go on to the trim wheel. Uh, so my trim wheel is a simple trim, 3D printed trim wheel uh, with a rotary encoder on the back. Uh, and you basically spin it to send a signal to the Arduino, but it'll also have a servo that shows you the needle position in the future. Uh, let's go on to the Cessna. So this is my trim wheel. It's not 3D printed, it's a real trim wheel. And I have flaps indication, or I mean, it has a needle. And so let me put it in the takeoff position. And yeah, that's my trim wheel. Let's get back to his. I actually don't know where my rudder pedals are, uh, but I'll shoot some B-roll. Um, 
Here are my rudder pedals. Uh, they're the Cytec Pro rudder pedals, uh, and I need to make an adapt, an adjustment to make sure they look like a Cessna rudder pedal. So these are my rudder pedals. They are Cessna 172 rudder pedals, original from Cessna, and they squeak a lot. The brakes are on top, are on top, so I press down to use brakes and push in to turn. And they make a lot of sound. Now let's go over to the throttle. Uh, my throttle has a slide potentiometer uh, that's a hundred millimeters, whatever that is in inches, and then as well as the mixture. They're made the same, uh, and they're relatively static, so they don't have a the they don't have a vernier like fine adjustment, and they don't have a a friction lock. Over to the Cessna. So th this is my throttle and this is my mixture. My mixture goes in, my mixture comes out. My throttle goes in, my throttle comes out. It works. Here's my flaps. Up, down, easy. Nice. I think we covered everything but the yoke, I guess. You might notice the part numbers up here, but it's possible that some of them aren't accurate. To find accurate ones, you can go to the Cessna 172, your model illustrated parts manual and use control F to find your part. You can just search up a term for it, basically. Uh, so like for altimeter, you just search altimeter and then you can go down the list and find the part number itself. It's kind of a little bit of a learning curve to get used to the organization structure with this PDF as it is very long, but it's very useful if you want to use OEM parts or real parts for your simulator. I know a lot of people that like interfacing real parts with their simulator and that's why I included all of these numbers. That concludes this interview. I know we forgot a few systems, but hopefully this gave you a general overview of the two uh, panels and how they work. Hopefully this taught you a ton, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. If you can't get enough of this face, make sure to click some of these other videos. But if you can get enough of this face, uh, just skip to the next video. I, I don't judge. Like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, um, go Patreon, Discord, Instagram, something. I don't even know anymore. I hope you have a fantabulous rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.